Hello everybody and welcome to our new space. Today we are looking at exporting frames from your sequence into PNGs. Um, and this is a very useful automation if you got a client, maybe you want to just send them some scamps, what you're busy with. So you just want to run through your timeline, maybe take a little snapshot of each clip um, and just send them some scamps of what you're busy with. Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. Welcome everybody uh, to this three-part series, mini-series, uh, that we're going to try out uh, all about exporting uh, screenshots from your active sequence. So if you didn't know, we've got a, a GitHub page uh, with all our tutorials. So if you've downloaded VS Code, we're always working in VS Code uh, using extend script. Uh, it makes it possible if you just download the zip so you can just go to, to the link in the description, but it's basically just GitHub Automator Plus Tutorials. Uh, go to this little code icon here, download the zip. You can do that, unzip that zip. And if you go to your VS Code and actually just open the folder that you just unzipped, this tutorials master, um, it'll actually open this as a workspace and you'll be able to access all of our settings that we're actually uploading with this repo. Um, so the nice thing about this is uh, for today, we've got our three automations that we're going to be looking at. For this mini series, um, we're going to be looking at three different automations. So we've got our at playhead, um, at edit points and at markers. So the nice thing, if you download the zip, unzip it and open it in VS Code, you'll actually have these uh, configurations already set up in your debugger. So you've already got all the, uh, all the settings that we've got for you. Cool, so let's jump into it um, and yeah, sort of set the scene. Um, we want to export screenshots from our timeline, all right? So in Quickies here, we've got a export screenshots uh, directory and in there we've got this at playhead automation. Cool, so this is the code that we're gonna be looking at and let me chat you through it, what, what's happening here. Uh, there's a new concept that we're introducing in this video, and it is the idea of the QE um, rabbit hole, if I can put it that way. Um, so QE stands for quality engineering, uh, and it is an extension of the given API, the standard API uh, that you have to your disposal within Premiere Pro, within all the Adobe uh, suite actually. But uh, Adobe themselves use this QE uh, package, or how can I say, um, extensions, enablements, additions, <laughs> hidden features, uh, yeah, just hidden gems, uh, uh, <laughs> all of these. So okay, the purpose, let me start with the purpose of QE, right? So Adobe has got a lot of engineers working uh, on Premiere Pro and they've got a lot of tests that they want to uh, run. So instead of them actually aut manually doing those tests, having people actually sitting there clicking through the application, much easier to script those tests, right? But to script those, they need a lot more superpowers. Uh, but with superpowers comes responsibility. So the QE enablement is not supported by Adobe. So if you go on any other forums, uh, you'll see that they usually just say, you know, you can use it, but use with caution. There's no guarantee that in any future version of any version of Adobe, so any of the new Creative Cloud applications, there's no guarantee that the QE methods will be supported. So that's sort of the best way that I can describe it. Gives you superpowers, but at the same time, you can't really know, you don't have that certainty that the functions that you're using will be supported in future versions. But okay, that being said, um, it works very similar to the other extend script objects that we've worked with. Um, and the only difference is all you've got to do is have this little line at the top here saying enable QE. And that will sort of open Pandora's box to you, open Pandora's box to you, um, and allow you to 
get all the superpowers, right? So the one superpower that we're using here is this export frame PNG. So that is a method that's not available in the standard API, right? Okay, so let's quickly run through this code. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're enabling our quality engineering API to give us our superpowers. Then we are getting a sequence. So I usually title my QE sequence, SQE, um, as opposed to the SEQ, like the sequence for the normal sequence. Um, so that I always know which one is the different one um, and where I can get my, my superpowers from. So another superpower that we're getting from the SQE is the CTI, the current time indicator of the playhead. Um, and that is, again, just a side effect, if I can put it that way, of using the QE function, is we need to play by the QE rules. Cool, so, yeah, first, what we're doing, enabling QE, getting the active sequence, but getting the SQE, so getting the QE active sequence. And then, because we're in QE world, we need to talk QE timestamps, right? So in our previous tutorials, we've looked at inserting clips uh, using the ticks, um, but because we're now in QE, we need to use a QE-based time code. So we're going to be using this sqe.cti.timecode, which in QE world um, is the way that we're going to be describing time, right? So that's the first thing that we need, is we need sort of the timestamp that we want to export our screenshot at. Uh, we're going to get that, store this in this variable playhead. Um, then we're going to have to create our output path. So where do we want to export our screenshot to? Got two variants for you here. So if you're on Mac, um, you can use this tilde forward slash uh, desktop notation. Um, that'll take you to your desktop of the current active user. So this tilde is just shorthand for your current active user. Um, on Windows, you'll have to write your path like this using the double backslashes, and that's just the consequence of Windows using backslashes to do their directory paths. Um, and in code, usually the backslash denotes some special meaning, so we need two backslashes there. Cool, so Windows, Mac, there's your two variants, and then we obviously need to create our output file name. So I'm splitting these up into different variables to keep it a bit more modular, but by all means, have this in one line, um, and you can sort of just write everything out. Maybe just to take note of this .fs method that we're calling on our output variable, um, that is just giving us the full path name, right? So similar to if on Mac you're using this tilde, .for, or tilde forward slash desktop, um, that will actually just, this .fs will just unravel that to forward slash home, forward slash your username, forward slash desktop. Cool, so we've got our output file name. Um, then we're going to this SQE saying give us our superpower export frame, giving it the location and our export file name. Cool stuff. Let's, uh, let's give this uh, a run through. I'm in Premiere Pro here. Uh, let's get a nice video shot. We got some rows going here. So let's see if we can export this rows. I'm going into my debugger. I've already set up my debugger. Um, I've got Extend Script Toolkit installed. I've got the Extend Script debugger. Wondering about all of that, links in the description, check out our previous videos on how to just set up the whole entire environment within VS Code to chat to Premiere Pro. Cool. Uh, basically, in the debugger, we can execute our scripts. I'm going to be executing this export screenshot at Playhead. Great stuff. Ran that. I'm exporting here to my D directory, um, file.png, and we've got a rose. Cool. <gasps> Thanks guys, this has been our first session uh, in just looking at how you can export a screenshot from your active sequence at the playhead. Uh, in the next session, we're looking at how you can just export the first frame of each clip. Join us.